So in order to read, update, or delete records from our database, first we'll need to actually have created records to work with. So today, the first stop on our CRUD journey is learning how to create records. So we'll be using the topic model today because it's really the most simplistic model that we have that doesn't rely on any externalized data. We already have our roles set up within the database. So for starters, let's go ahead and get ourselves a controller created for this. So let's do node ace make controller, and let's just call this topic. And that will create us a topics controller, and we'll be working within here. So Let's go ahead and uncomment our HTTP context. All right, then let's do public async store, give it an empty object of type HTTP context contract and get that started. So there's several different ways that we can actually create a record using Lucid. So first and foremost, we can actually instantiate a new instance of the model itself, populate the properties directly on it, and then call the save method. So for that, let's first do const call this topic equals new, and then we reach directly for our topic model and then just instantiate a new instance of that actual class. And if we do topic dot, we can actually take a look at the IntelliSense options here. And you can see we have a lot of stuff going on within this actual model. And a lot of this stuff, especially the stuff starting with dollar signs are things that Adonis uses to keep track of the model state, what's populated on it and all of that fun stuff. Um, but if we scroll down a little bit further here, you do start to see our actual properties on it as well. So if we were to start typing in something like a name, which we have on the model as a defined column, we can populate that with something like Adonis.js as the defined topic name. Now, in addition to the name, we also have a slug, which we can populate, and the slug is going to serve as a URL safe version of the name. Now, Adonis.js does have a first party package called Adonis.js Slugify that will actually take the name of the provided record and then use that to create a URL safe version for our slug properties. So the slug creation process can be automated, uh, but for right now, since we're still just learning things, let's go ahead and just manually provide Adonis.js here. And then we also have a description, so we can do topic description. We can provide something like an awesome Node.js framework. And now if we jump back into our model real quick and take a look, we do have our ID, our name, slug description, created at and updated at as the actual columns defined within the table on our model. So those are all the properties that we have available to manually define ourselves, but several of them we don't need to manually define at all. Updated at and created at, we have set to auto create and auto update. So those will take care of themselves if we're using the model as we are here. In addition to that, the ID, our database will take care of that. We don't need to worry about it. We did manually set it with our role, but that's because I wanted it to explicitly match the enum that we have for our role in itself. So as we stated back whenever we did that, in most cases, you're not going to want to provide the ID value yourself. Let your database take care of it as we are here. So if we take a look back, we have our name, slug, description. That's everything we need for our topic to be defined. In order to actually persist this into the database, all that we need to do is await topic.save, and that will save it into the database. And lastly, just so that we can actually inspect what we have, let's go ahead and return that topic back. So let's give that a save and rig this up to a route. So let's jump into our routes. We'll start up here at the top so that we know what's good. And let's do route post topics store topics controller.store as topics.store. Give that a save. Next, let's open up a REST client so that we can actually test this out. I'm gonna be working with Insomnia. You might be using Postman or something like that. While that's opening up, let's jump into our terminal and actually boot up our server, so npm run dev. Okay, here we go. Let's create a new HTTP request out of here. Switch this over to post, HTTP local host, colon 3333 slash topics slash store. Now we're not working with our HTTP context at all quite yet for this, so we don't need to alter or send anything with this request. We can just send it off. And you'll see that we get back our name, slug, description, created at, and updated at, and the ID. Just as I described earlier, our created at, updated at, and ID were auto-populated for us. And then the name, slug, and description match what we had defined within our model. We can verify that this actually saved by opening up a GUI of our database here. Uh, for this, I'm using tables plus, so we can go ahead and open up our topics table. And you can see we have one record here with Adonis.js, slug of Adonis.js, an awesome Node.js framework with the created at and updated at populated. So that's one way that we can create records with Lucid. If we jump back into our topics controller here, so there's an alternative option that we have that's very similar to this approach. Um, instead of just tagging the property directly off of the topic instance itself, we can instead do topic.merge and provide an object of key value pairs that we want to set within the records value. So for instance, we could do name JavaScript, slug of JavaScript, and a description here of a cool scripting language. And then we would take these out since they would no longer be in play. Give this a save, jump back into Insomnia, send this off. And you can see now we get back our JavaScript topic. And if we take a look back into Tables Plus, give it a refresh, that populated all of those values directly onto there. And you can see our ID auto incremented and the created at and updated at did also auto apply as well. 
One reason that the merge option is super cool is because most of the time you're gonna be ingesting stuff out of your request body, validating it, getting that back as an actual object. So let's take a look at how that might work. So we could do something like request out of here. We can grab our data directly off of the request and we can do request.only, provide an array of the properties that we expect. So this could be something like name, slug, and description. And now our data value here is actually going to be that key value object of our name, slug, and description. Now, as you can see here, these are coming back as a type of any. So one thing that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do in order to have a production ready environment here is make sure that you validate the data so that you know it's coming in as anticipated types. So we would wanna validate this to make sure that our name is actually a string, our slug is a string, and our description is a string as well. But since it's coming back as an object with those key value pairs, what we can do is instead of manually defining the object ourselves, is just provide that data in. So if we get rid of the manually defined properties here, in order to create a record, this is all that we have. We have our const data ingesting the data that we want out of our request. We're creating a new topic record, merging our request data into that new record, and then saving it off into the database. Now you can simplify this a little bit further since there's not much going on on this line. So we can get rid of this line altogether, call await topic.merge, and then just chain save directly off of it. And that will work just fine as well. So now let's give this a save, jump back into Insomnia. Now, since we are expecting some request data off of our body, we do want to manually provide that here within Insomnia. For example, if we were to just send this off, you're gonna see that we get an insert error because it's expecting values. Whenever we're getting this back, it's going to come back as invalid data for our topic. So within Insomnia here, let's define our body. We'll just send it up as JSON. And so we'll have a name, say of TypeScript, a slug of TypeScript, and a description of type safety for JavaScript. And now if we were to send this off, you'll see that we get back the actual record. So everything succeeded just fine. We can verify that within tables plus, give that a refresh, and now we have our TypeScript record here as well in a much reduced line set from what we initially started with. All right, so now that we have kind of a feel going on of what the data flow is going on here, uh, let's go ahead and roll through the additional options that we have to actually create record. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment these lines out here and let's do const topic equals await topic dot. And there's actually a create method directly off of this. And we can just provide that data in there just like that. So that's a one liner to create it. You don't need to instantiate a new instance of your object. You can just take the model, call the create method directly off of it and provide the data in, and that will give you back the exact same data that we got in the initial approach. In addition to that, if you need to create multiple instances of a record, so let's say we wanted to create multiple topics in one blow, we could do const topics equals await topic dot, and there's a create many option, and we can provide it in an array of our data. So data being one topic, so we can provide it an array of different topic datas, and that will return us back an array of our topics. And one thing to note is within our code base here, all of these are returning back model instances. So if we actually take a look at what we have available off of this, so if we take a look at topics zero dot, you'll see it looks the exact same as it did whenever we were instantiating a new class instance. So we have all of the same things available to us. That'll come in play later on whenever we start talking about updating, deleting, and so on. Okay, let's go ahead and comment this one out. And we have a couple more to talk about here. So we have const topic equals await topic dot, and there's one called first or create. And what this will do is it will take two different argument sets. It will take the first one, which will be the search argument set. And then the second one, which will be the save payload. So here for the first argument, we'd wanna provide an object of values to search for within the database to see whether or not the record actually exists. And if we were to provide a topic that already exists, say maybe something like JavaScript, which we already have in our database, it will skip over the save payload, which is the second argument here. And so here we can provide something like name, uh, JavaScript, slug, JavaScript, and a description of, I can't remember what exactly we gave the description there, but we'll just write description. So the first argument is the search payload. So this will attempt to search our database for any records matching this criteria that we set, which in this case it will, since we do have a JavaScript record in our database. If it does find that record, it will skip the second argument and it will not create a new record. Instead, it will just return back the record that it found. If it does not find this record within the database, then it will go ahead and create the record for us before returning it using the second argument's payload. So if JavaScript did not exist within our database, then we would have a new record created with the name of JavaScript, a description of description. Along the same lines, there's a couple other options that we have. So we have const topic equals await topic dot update or create. And then there's also update or create many. And this works very similar. So the first argument is going to be our search payload again. So we could do something like JavaScript there. 
You can also provide multiple arguments to these as well. So don't just think that you're limited to one argument set here. So if we wanted something to also match a slug of JavaScript, you could do that there as well. That also goes for the first to create. And then the second argument, the same as the other one, is going to be the update payload. And so this would be the exact same as our first or create, just like so. So we'll use the first argument set to try and find records matching this. So in this case, it would try to find a record with a name of JavaScript and the slug of JavaScript, lowercase. So in both instances of the if else here, the second argument set's going to be used. In the first instance, where if it does not find JavaScript within our database, it will use the second argument set to go ahead and create that record and then kick it back to us. If it does find JavaScript within our database, then it will use the second argument set to update the record to make sure it matches the payload that we've provided. And then lastly here today, we have update or create many. So let's take a look at that one. So we have const topics equals await topic dot update or create many. The first argument set here is going to be the predicate or the property that we actually want to perform the search on. So in this case, it would be something like name. The second argument set here is going to be an array of the many records that we would want to create if it does not find any instances within our database. So for example, this would be an array of the entire object set that we have for our topic here. So it would be the name slug description for the individual topic that we would want to create. And then you could have multiple instances of those that you're providing here as well. So this one's different than the others. Instead of taking an object set, it will just take the name of the property and it will use this name to perform the search against the object sets that we've provided as the second argument. So in this case, it will search within our database for a topic with the name of JavaScript since that's the name property that we've provided in the first argument. If it's found, then it will perform the same if else as the update or create method that we've previously covered. So it will use this to create the record if it's not found and it will use it to update the record if it is found. So it just allows you to perform that across many different instances of a record. Now there's a few different additional ways that you can go about creating records using new ups and stuff like that. But for the most part here, I think this gives you a good baseline to get started with actually creating records within your database. Now in the next lesson, we'll expand upon the creation process slightly by incorporating the before create model hook. And we're gonna use this to make sure that our passwords are always hashed before they're saved into the database. Thus ensuring that we never have plain text passwords in our database, which you should never have. So that'll be our next lesson. So thank you all so much for watching here today. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below and subscribing for future lessons just like this one. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.